Hey everybody, how's it going? All right. Great to be here today. Uh, I want to thank Avid for bringing me in. I want to thank B&H for having me here. And uh, today we're going to be talking about the amazing 11 rack. Um, if you haven't heard about it, where you been? It's incredible. And uh, I've been using it now for a few years. Um, completely love it. It's my go-to piece a lot. I keep it in a, in a gig bag because I take it a lot with me. I don't even rack it in the studio anymore because I'm always taking it with me. A um, couple cool things I've done with this piece. I, I played a gig with Joe Satriani. You guys have heard of Joe Satriani? Pretty good guitar player. Um, I did a gig with Joe in Salt Lake City, and he called me up. He's like, I need you to open up my show, and I'm, I'm, you know, we, got, we need an opener tomorrow night. And I couldn't even bring my band. So I went out, and I, I literally brought my backing tracks on a phone, and I brought my 11 rack, and I got on the plane, and I flew out there. And I took the direct side of the back, right out of the back of this, put it in the PA, and I played to my tracks. And uh, Satriani came up to me after, and he, he literally said to me, he said, Gary, you know, first of all, that was the bravest thing I've seen anyone do, get up and play with an iPhone. He said, but your guitar tone was amazing. What were you using? And I showed him the 11 rack, and he, he knew about it. He'd actually created some custom presets for it, but he'd never heard it in, in, you know, in a big PA system. And it really uh, it came through for me in, in flying colors. I, I completely love it. The thing about the 11 rack is you know, it's not only a, a guitar preamp you know, processing effect you know, unit, but it's also a great audio interface. Um, so you can, if you want to run Pro Tools or you want to run another you know, audio system, a DAW, this can be, actually be your interface with your laptop or whatever you're running. And you can also plug a microphone in. There's a mic pre right on the front. So you can actually do a lot, a lot more than just the guitar stuff. What's, what's great is if you're running Pro Tools, this will handle all the DSP processing power of the guitar tones because this has it all basically in it. Um, a uh, few things right, out, right off the top I want to talk about the 11 rack is how they laid it out, how they set it up is so user friendly. Um, it's a lot like an amplifier. If you look at the front, you have your knobs right across here, which will basically be the same as one of your amp, you know, whatever amp sound you're going to be using, the tones will show up. And the display, what's great is if you press this button, you can kind of scroll through a couple different uh, visuals. Like right now, you can see. I have all the knobs in the front. This is going to be whatever amp sound I'm using right now. So right now I'm using like a sort of a JCM 800 kind of guitar tone here. Let's see. So that's my, you know, Marshall kind of JCM kind of sound. And right in the front now, when I bring this up, you can see the controls are lighting up. So if I want to go over right now, and I want to turn down, you know, say the gain. I want to just grab the gain control right here. Preamp. I can roll that back. I can clean it up. Or I can crank it up. All right, so right there, you, you just grab it, you adjust your control. So there's not scrolling through pages and pages of trying to find where the parameters are as soon as you call it up. Now, the other thing is, if I hit this button, it's going to show a bigger display which is great if you're playing on stage, you're jamming, you want to look over and see what the, uh, what the image is looking like. Now, the other thing I like about the 11 rack a lot is when you're playing through it, it responds a lot like a real amplifier. And the way they achieve that is when you plug the guitar in, there's a, tr there's a, um, a true high Z automatic uh, impedance adjustment. What that means is if you're using a, a Strat with single coils or humbuckers or a Les Paul or an Ibanez, it doesn't matter which guitar you're using, it will adjust the buffer going inside. I know it's kind of a technical thing. It does it all automatically while you're, while you're just playing. And what that means is when you're playing electric guitar, you want to be able to strike the notes. You want it to have some give. You want it to respond to the way you play. That's what that does, is when you, when you attack it harder, it responds. Got great speaker simulation right out of the box. You plug it in. You've got great, great sounds. Um, the other thing I want to explain a little bit about is if you look at all these buttons, the gray buttons over here, those are going to correspond to any effects. So say you have reverb. You don't want the reverb. Reverb's gone. So it's that quick. If you say, okay, I, I wish I could have some delay on this. There's your delay. Okay, it's that quick. It's that easy. And if you hold the button. You press it and hold it, 
it'll bring up all your parameters right away. So if you want to make some quick adjustments, all you have to do is hold the button. As soon as you start messing around with stuff, you'll see this will light up red. It means, okay, you changed your preset. Do you want to save it or not? Then you just hold that button down. It'll save whatever changes you made. If you get a little lost, you can hit the editor twice, and it'll, it'll basically exit, and now you can scroll around to different, to different parameters um, and different patches. You can move out of this, out of this mode. Um, so all these buttons are going to correspond to all your different effects, um, and the sounds are amazing. I'll show you real quick here a couple of, a couple of cool effects that I like. Here's a, a cleaner, a clean guitar, guitar sound. Amazing chord, like the, the effects are incredible. All the all the effects in this unit. So you hear that sound, you're like, you know what? I like the sound, but I don't like the delay. It's too much delay. Shut off the delay. Now you got your reverb and your chorus with no delay. It's that simple. So um, I have this hooked up right now to the ground control made by Voodoo Lab. I have a foot controller that's connected to it, and it interfaces very well with the 11 rack because the, the Voodoo, the Voodoo Lab ground control, basically you can have your patches on the bottom, you can have your four basic presets, and you can go through your different banks, but all the other buttons on the, on the floor are gonna, be, are gonna connect to all these switches. So if I'm on this setting right here, and I wanna take off the delay, delay's gone. I wanna shut off the reverb, the reverb's gone. So all my effects are literally just like you would have your stomp boxes on the floor. They're going to be all controlled by the ground control. Um, another great thing about it is you can, you know, say you want to put on a modulation sound. <laughs> Chorus, phaser, flanger, whatever the sound is, it's going to be right there. Um, there's also a tap tempo uh, delay on the front, which you can also have on your controller. So say if you're doing something with some delay, <laughs> want it to be in time with the music, you know, and say the drummer starts off a song, you know, and, and he's, you know, maybe a little fast one night or a little slow one night, you know. Okay, that's off, right? So I'll just go, dun, 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 just tap my foot. Now it's right in time with the music. So the tap tempo works great for getting your delay time right in time with the music. Um, there's also a lot of amplifiers in here. There's a collection of great amps from the, you know, the vintage amps going back to the 50s, to the 60s, to the 70s. I mean, it literally covers all the amplifiers, the, you know, the AC30s, all the, all the old vintage amps. Um, I show you guys a few of my favorite patches. Yeah. I want to show you guys a few of my favorites. The way that I kind of set up my ground control is I sort of keep a crunch rhythm on the left side, like my first patch is always, is always a crunchy rhythm sound. Just crunch it up, right? And my second patch is always a little bit of delay. And then and I usually use four for like a special, like three might be more delay, and then four I always put like either a, um, like this is an effect. If you want to do like say a movie soundtrack, if you want to come in and to a song on stage or something. Or well, if you get a call and they want you to do a horror movie, you could always do this. Lay down a little of that, right? Soundtrack's done. All right, I'm going to show you some of my other favorite ones. Okay, this is one that I really love. This is like, let's go back to like, the Fillmore East, man, 19, I don't know, 70, 69, I'm thinking. Uh, 
Pretty cool, huh? And uh, let me show you another one I really like. Okay, this is this is a great clean sound. We're gonna go back to the '80s. Can you guys come back to the to the '80s for a minute? Right? My old friend Lita Ford. You guys know Lita Ford? Remember her song "Kiss Me Would well, Close My Eyes Forever"? Right? This is the sound. And it doesn't have to be for the 80s, you know what I mean? We could take that sound, we could use it, use it for today. Um, I'll show you a few other ones that I really like. Okay, this is one of the heavier sounds, you know, more of a, a crunchy. Because when you're playing guitar, there's a lot of different tones you want to be able to have. Sometimes you want more of a vintage sound, sometimes you want something a little heavier. And I always, when I'm playing through a processor, I want to make sure it covers everything I need. This thing does. If, if I tune down... You should hear this thing when you put it through like a 412 cabinet or to a bigger PA. It is thunderous. I mean, you guys can hear the sound even just, even just with this, this particular thing. Pretty fun, huh? So this thing can go as heavy as you want. If you're in a death metal band, a lot of guys I know are actually traveling all over the world with these and they're taking them with them to Europe. They're going everywhere because they can show up and they can have their sounds exactly the way they want it. They can have everything programmed the way, they, the way it was on the album. All the effects can be right there. Um, let me show you a couple other cool, cool presets that I really like. This is like the old, uh, the SLO. Uh, you guys like Eddie Van Halen? You know, Van Halen, he was a big fan of the Soldano sound. That was kind of something that he used to d develop a lot of his sounds uh, with, the, with the 5150s and everything. And this sound, when I hear this sound, I hear Eddie Van Halen. And if you add a little modulation to it, right? What do you think? You guys liking it? <laughs> awesome. All right, here we go. I'm going to show you a couple more that I really like here. It's a nice delay right here. Kind of a U2 kind of thing. You know, you get that little, that, that kind of... Another great, one of my other favorite ones is, um, you guys like Brian May from Queen? Remember that kind of sound he would get? Right? Now, your master control, if you look at the front of the 11 rack, see this knob that's silver? I actually colored it with a silver pen because when I was on stage, I was, reaching, I was running for the knob and I'm like, where is it? So, I, so this is always going to be your master volume. So if, you're, if, you're, if your rig's too loud, you can run over and you can go up or down. So you don't have to run into pages and try to find which knob is going gonna, is gonna, to you know, get me more level. Bam. Go right over here. Grab it. It's like a master volume on your amplifier. So if I want to get a little more, a little more Brian May.
presets out of the box? Are these, are these some of your tweaks? Uh, there is the, the Brian May, that's out of the box. Um, the, the U2 stuff, the 80s clean sound is all, is all out of the box. Um, a lot of the other presets I'm playing, I did create myself. Uh, you know, some of the rhythm stuff and the crunchy stuff. Like, when I, when I got to play with Joe Satriani, I, I knew I was going to be playing this through a really big PA system. So what's great about the 11 rack is you can, you can pick the speaker that you're going to be playing through. You can pick which kind of cabinet you're going to play, whether you want vintage 30-watt speakers. You can actually pick the type of speaker, and you can even decide where the microphone is actually going to be on the speaker. You can actually move the microphone. And i got to tell you, these fine, uh, minute things that you could change made a huge difference when I was dialing this in to play in a big PA. And I found exactly the right setting so that I could play super loud and not take people's heads off. Because what you got to be careful about is when you're creating guitar tones is, I, I, I always say there's like the bedroom tone and then there's the stage tone. And sometimes they're two different things. You know, in the bedroom, it might be great to have, you know, tons of distortion and a lot of treble and everything. But sometimes when you get live, it might be too much. So you want to, you know, really listen, you know, carefully when you're playing live at a loud level that you're not, you know, hurting people with, with, the, with the sound. Um, and what I do a lot is when I'm dialing in my tones, I'll bend down and I'll listen to actually the speaker, you know, and hear what's coming out. Uh, the 11 rack works great with other amplifiers. Like if you have a small combo amp and you want to have this going into the PA and you're playing live and you want to have a little amp on the side to kind of have something else going, it, it couldn't be easier to do. There's jacks right on the front. You can literally take this cable out, go plug it in an amplifier. And then you can adjust the level on the front here, going to the amp if you want. And then you could have that amplifier just on its own. Or if you cho choose to run the 11 rack straight into an amp. Maybe you have an old combo amp you want to run in, you, you want to run this through. You can absolutely run this through your amp. Uh, if you have an amp with an effects loop, you can actually run it into the back of your amp into the effects loop. And this becomes, you know, the preamp and the processing and you use your amp is more as the power. Because what you want to be careful about when you're using preamp is you don't want to keep preamping a preamp. Um, you know, when you run this into another amplifier, you don't want to put distortion on top of distortion because then it's just going to sound kind of messy. Uh, and the other thing you want to do is, um, you know, when you have the speaker simulator on here, it, um, it makes a big difference. So if you're, if, you're amp if you're running this through another amplifier with a speaker, you want to make sure that you shut off the speaker simulation, okay? Um, and I want to show you real quick on just one of my sounds right now. I just want to show you, if, if I go on the front and I hold down the edit button, if I hold it for a couple of seconds, it's going to bring me to a window where I can scroll through my different parameters and things like that. So if I go down to my um, speaker simulator, let me take a look here. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I think that's actually in another window. Excuse me. Right, so here we go. We're going to edit. Yeah, here we go. So I'm going to show you, I just want to show you real quick um, about the speaker simulation. So right now I'm scrolling through my different effects, my amps. Um, let's see here, cabinet. Here we go. So now I'm on the cabinet. So my, my guitar right now is playing through. Uh, it's a 2x12 two, a two with a, a dynamic 57 microphone. So if I hit this chord, okay, and I go to the speaker, I go to the speakers, so that's an open back speaker, right? 212 uh, black duo combo. Super combo 212. Here's a 410 uh, tweed. You hear how it totally changed the, the tonality? Now it sounds like 10 inch speakers. You really hear the difference in the tonality. Now, if I move it, okay, here's a 4x12 with 30 watt speakers in it. See how it got chunky all of a sudden? It got really beefy. This is no joke. This is for real. And now, if I go down here, I want to show you this. This is interesting. Um, let me see if I can find it. All right, now, if I go, I'm going to scroll over a little bit here. Model. I want you guys to see the speaker simulation. Let's 
you for standing here. Can I play a song? Yeah. I want to hear. I want you guys to hear it within the song. I got another one. If I drop this one, though, I'm coming after you, man. There's one pick. The only uses one. <laughs> Dude, this is the pick of destiny, man. Don't lose that pick. I can't. Can I rock a little bit? I need to wake up. I haven't had any coffee today. Here we go. We'll put a little song on here. This is called Utopia. Very much. All right, settle down, guys. I'm only getting paid for one song. But, um, you know, another thing I did want to mention, everybody, uh, when you're working with the 11 rack, what's great is if you are recording with it in Pro Tools, there is a, a feature that's called Embedded Track. And what's great about that is you can actually set it up. Uh, when you're running it in Pro Tools, there's a great editor that comes up on the screen so that you can actually kind of have this over here and you can sit and make your adjustments on the screen to effects or whatever else you want to do. Uh, but when you set your preferences to embed whatever this is doing, then when you record a track in Pro Tools, a little E will show up at the end of your track and you could go back three months later and you could literally hook up your 11 rack and say, I want to recall whatever settings I had that day and it will actually remember exactly how you had the settings. 
So if you wanted to go back and like, I just want to change, change it a little bit, uh, and then you can also record a track of just direct guitar while you're recording with this, and it comes out as a kind of a tiny little black line. Like when you're recording it, you might look at it and go, wow, there's no level. It looks like this tiny little thing. But what it's doing is it's actually recording your guitar just, you know, just a clean, just straight sound with no processing. It sounds kind of like Buck Owens, you know, real twangy and picky. But you take that reamp sound, run it back through your 11 rack after you've recorded, and you can decide any sound or any tone that you want after you've recorded. And what I do, I make music for a living. You know, I have to write songs or my kids don't eat. So I tend to write a lot of songs. Um, and what I do a lot with my 11 rack is I'll sit at home and I'll be working on demos and I'll just kind of throw down these quick sounds, just thinking, oh, this is just to be something I'm going to whip down and, you know, in six, six weeks or something, I'll fix it later and I'll, and I'll go back and I'll re-record with, you know, real amps. And a lot of times I don't. I go back and I listen to what I did and I'm like, man, my performance was great that day. I was just feeling it. I was really in the mode and I just wish I could just use that sound I had. And with the 11 rack, I can because I can go back in and I can say, wow, man, I had way too much delay or I had way too much reverb. And sometimes when you're mixing music, you'll have all these other tracks involved. Now you have to kind of pull the guitar up a little closer or you want something a little further back and you've got to adjust your effects levels. So it enables me to keep some great performances that I did and not have to lose that performance. Um, and I love amplifiers, believe me. I mic amps up all the time, old tube amps. I love new tube amps. I just love warm sounds. And uh, this has been the first guitar type processor that I've used that has made me not want to go grab my amp all the time because it literally does respond and, and acts like an amp and it records very, very well. When you, when you record tracks with 11 rack, they sound amazing in the mix of things. And sometimes I'll spend three hours miking an amp up and I can't get a better tone than I'm getting out of this. I don't know why. Um, they went through a lot of trouble in, in calculating the way these amps sound and the way they react to the way we play. Um, and that, that I think is a, is a big key to why uh, this, the 11 rack has, has not only continued to grow in popularity, but it's, it's constantly gaining new fans, even to this day, because people still are discovering it. Um, and, uh, you know, I think if you're into recording and you're into, you know, effects and processing, you've got to get one. You've got to get one. And if, you, if you're into Pro Tools and, you, and you've always wanted to get into Pro Tools and you've always wanted to get into multi-track recording, this is definitely the time to do it. Uh, it's never been better. Um, I'm in love with this thing. I take it everywhere I go. You, you, could, you could show up at a gig, literally give it to the sound guy, say, plug me in, bring me up in the monitors, and you literally wouldn't even need a speaker on stage. When I played with Joe Satriani, I had no speakers on stage at all. I just had house and the monitors, and it was the most amazing sound. It was incredible, the, the way it sounded. And it, that's when it really sold me, is when I did it in a live situation through a live PA. It really uh, it made, a, it made a big difference for me. Um, but yeah, super fast to set up, super easy. And... I think I've been on 11 rack for two years now, at least two years, and I never get tired of this thing. Like every time I turn it on, it's inspiring to me, every single time. And that, that's the key, because you know as guitar players, we always get bored with stuff after a little while. It's like, I gotta get new pedals, I gotta get a new amp, I need a new guitar, I need new pickups. And this thing, I'm still discovering things in it. You know, I'm still discovering things. Like I'll, I'll be messing around with it and I'll say, you know, I, you know like this, there's some great, just some great sounds that, um, that I'll put on. This is one of their custom sounds. Like they have some custom amps that they created. <laughs> this is a sound I discovered the other day, and I, I fell in love with the sound. And I also want to let you guys know I'm using a wah pedal, but I'm using it with my ground control, and it's it's actually a um, it's made. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's made by Mission. Okay, and it's just a shell. It's not even a real wah. There's no nine volt in it. It's just a controller. But it looks and feels exactly like a wah. And if I step on this button, I can activate it. So the, so the wah pedal, you know, you can basically run it with your 11 rack, with, with a controller. You don't need any batteries. And it sounds great. I put it right up against my old crybaby. We did a, we did a taste test, and we, 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 we almost couldn't tell the difference, which is pretty amazing. Um, and I've got a bunch of I've got a bunch of custom presets that um, 
I'm happy to give you guys, man. What are some of mine? Here's, here's one of mine. This is called the Gary Hoey Deep Delay. This one of mine. Um, this is one I came up with, kind of a fuzzy one. It's just, it's just that old fuzz, you know, the fuzz face kind of sound. Um, yeah, this is the one I like. This is Steve Stevens. <laughs> It's the old phaser, right? Do you remember that phaser, the little, the little orange phaser, phase 90? And all I do is hit the modulation button, it goes away. That's all I got to do if I don't want it anymore. This is one of mine, kind of old, like a... And the great thing is, man, if you're a guitarist and you've always wanted, you know, an AC30 or you've always wanted, you know, a pair of stereo matchless amps, you know, you can get, you can get them. It's right here. To play around with some of those sounds, you know, it's, in, it's very inspiring because a lot of us can't go out and buy, you know, all these great old vintage amps. You know what I mean? I mean, those are the sounds from those eras, but you can take those sounds and you can make them new again. You can re, reinvent them with new sounds and new effects with the 11 box, 11 rack. And that's uh, the thing that keeps me excited, man, is the tones. I, I, I should send some publishing to Avid. I really should because I've written so many great songs because of this. But I, you know, at this point, you know, my manager's taking 20, my agent's taking 15, Uncle Sam's taking 50, my wife's taking the rest, I'm negative 40. So on that note, buy a t-shirt on the way out. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Gary Hoey. <laughs> on behalf of Avid and b &H, man, thank you guys so much. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, b &H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.